Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Critchlow. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. I've also been a church pastor. And I'm doing a series of talks on depression under the overall theme of faith and mental health. And this now I want to talk about today is on the different kinds of depression that we might come across. We were talking recently about the what is basically depression, where the mood is low and down for long periods of time, sometimes the energy and the interest has gone, and then there are other features like loss of sleep, loss of energy, uh, weight loss, and all many other things that I've already mentioned. And that is the predominant type of depression. However, there is another kind of depression which we might call bipolar depression. Its old name used to be manic depression. And here the picture is a little bit different. You see, as well as having those periods of where people are low and down, they also have periods where actually they feel very high and elevated and we, they go through what we call a manic phase. These are some of the symptoms that they, they may have. They may be very upbeat and jumpy and irritable. Uh, they're often euphoric. They feel everything is absolutely wonderful. Uh, massive self-confidence, for example. Uh, increased sense of well-being. They're often decreased need of sleep. They're often not sleeping at all or sleeping very little and getting exhausted as a result. They're talkative, very talkative sometimes, and they can be very difficult to interrupt. And often in their speech, they're going from one topic to the other with rapidity, and it's very difficult to follow sometimes. Sometimes they're making connections between their sentences in an unusual way, such as a rhyming connection, that kind of thing. Their thoughts are racing and they're easily distractible. And sometimes they have a grandiose ideas. I can change the world. I know what to do to save the world. I've got this wonderful business plan. And of course, they can wreck their finances and wreck their reputation very rapidly. Sometimes they are disinhibited and go around in a semi-clothed state. All of those kind of things can happen if somebody is manic. Of course, it's not usually or always that case. So we do talk about bipolar 1 and bipolar 2, what I've described as bipolar 1. Bipolar 2 is where people are very talkative, they may be restless, they may be not sleeping so well, and they perhaps have some degree of understanding of what's going on. Catherine Zeta-Jones checked into a clinic with bipolar 2. Um, Although when people have the bipolar one, the severe variety I've talked about, they often have no insight at all and they uh, do not understand that they're not well and often they need uh, treatment uh, and that may need to be in hospital. So that is uh, the bipolar type of depression. We also recognise that there's something called seasonal affective disorder. And this actually is more common the closer you are to the North Pole. So northern Finland, Scandinavia, it's more common. And as the nights get longer and the days get shorter, then actually what happens is people can suffer from depression. And if they know it's coming on, then they can take antidepressants sometimes before they get really sick with the depression. Other than that, the bright light therapy is sometimes valuable. We also talk about dysthymia, which is not really a true depression, but people often feel low and down in their mood for long periods of time. It tends to be run a, a protracted course. So that is dysthymia. And there are other kinds as well, but those are three of the common kinds that we talk about. Going back to bipolar for a minute, it's not as common as the unipolar, which is the depression that we've talked about before. Uh, it comes on sometimes a bit earlier in life, and people say there's a more genetic component to it. So that's the bipolar. St. Paul, obviously, was somebody who went through very great difficulties in his life, and the Bible is so accurate and true about his experiences. For example, he says this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says that I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. It's interesting to note that the Apostle Paul actually went through some very tough times as well, and the Bible is an accurate record of people's emotional state as well. But in that time, he discovered that God was with him. And 
as he went through that very, very difficult time, he found that God was actually speaking to him and able to encourage him. The Lord said to him, do not be afraid any longer. Go on speaking and do not be silent. And you know, when we go through tough times and difficult times, we can know that God is with us. And sometimes in those times, God will really encourage us in new ways. And this is what St. Paul found. Thank you.